This week's lab will be studying enzymes, and you'll be wanting to be sure to be ready for the technical aspects of this lab. In fact, check with your lab instructor ahead of time to find out which of the activities in the lab manual we're going to be completing. We have varied this from semester to semester, so you want to make sure that you're ready for the correct part of the lab exercise. So the glossary of your textbook says that an enzyme is a macromolecule serving as a catalyst, a chemical agent that increases the rate of a reaction without being consumed by the reaction, and that most enzymes are proteins. You can learn quite a bit about enzymes in Chapter 8 of your textbook, The Introduction to Metabolism. And if you turn to page 152 and 153, I think you'll find the most critical information. One thing to keep in mind is that the enzyme is specific. And this illustration in figure 8.15 really demonstrates how this enzyme has an active site and due to both its shape, three-dimensional shape, but also its charge, it's able to interact with a particular substrate and facilitate the reaction occurring in the cell. So it happens faster than it would all on its own. Another figure that's going to be really useful to you in understanding the way that an enzyme functions is to take a look at figure 8.14. The idea here is that there are some reactions that require an input of energy to get them started. But when the enzyme is present, it reduces the amount of energy that's required to get the reaction to begin. So enzymes are important in facilitating the chemical reactions that happen in our bodies, and in fact having them happen at a biologically relevant rate, you know, within our lifespans rather than over millennia. And so these enzymes facilitate reactions, but they don't get used up. So what's a common example that some of you may have even experienced in your everyday life? Well, have you ever known anybody who was unable to enjoy ice cream, cereal because of the milk, because of their inability to digest the sugar found in milk, which is called lactose? So many people are unable, especially as adults, to produce the enzyme lactase, which breaks down milk sugar lactose, and it results in them feeling a lot of discomfort if they do actually eat cereal with milk, or if they eat ice cream, or a lot of times cheese and even yogurt products. Even though those are processed products, they'll be affected by not being able to digest that milk sugar. It makes it really uncomfortable. So these days, there's relief for people who experience intestinal distress when they eat milk sugar in the form of various products that already contain lactase enzyme within them. So the lactase enzyme breaks down the disaccharide, lactose, into two monosaccharides, glucose and galactose. And they are present already in things like lactate milk and in cottage cheeses that contain a lactase enzyme, even in some ice creams it's already mixed in, but people can also purchase either drops or tablets that can be swallowed when consuming dairy products. And so this enzyme is now widely available, but remember that enzymes aren't just for sort of our comfort and enjoyment of our foods, but in fact they're critical in facilitating all of the metabolic reactions within the cells in our body, and not just for animals, but for plants, for fungi, for bacteria, and for protists. So for all the groups of living things, enzymes are critical in facilitating reactions. The enzymes don't get used up, and what you're going to learn in lab are what are some of the conditions under which enzymes work their best, and under which they work their worst. So whether or not you're able to enjoy dairy products without consuming an artificial enzyme product, remember how important they are in facilitating the hundreds of thousands of reactions that are happening in your body right now.